Afternoon, everyone. I'm Annie, Marketing Officer at Police Now. Um, so I just want to kind of thank you all for joining our virtual event today, uh, where you get to learn more about Police Now um, and our award-winning National Graduate Leadership Program. Um, by way of introduction, I've been working at Police Now just over three years. Um, working closely with our partners, our partner universities um, to promote our graduate programs. Um, more importantly, I love the opportunity it gives me um, to help contribute, well, I guess behind the scenes contribute um, to the change that we want to see in not only our communities, but in policing. Um, I'm also super, super excited to have Anaya with me today. I can't see you Anaya because I'm sharing my screen, but um, You'll hear from Anaya shortly. Um, if anything, you'll learn so much from Anaya because um, she is the expert in the room. She's completed a program um, and she's even recently helped to train some of our newer participants. Um, so the agenda for today, um, we'll kick off the session with a bit of an intro to police now. And then I will hand over to Anaya, who has so kindly taken a time out to speak to you all um, about her career in policing, um, what she was doing before joining, um, her experience on the programme, um, a bit about career progression. Um, and she'll also share some of her advice and tips for those who are thinking of joining. Um, sorry, I can hear myself. Um, but yeah, those who are thinking of joining, um, you'll get some useful tips from Anaya. Um, we'll also have a bit, um, bit of a session at the end for Q&A, um, so if you do have any questions, feel free to kind of pop these in the chat as we go, um, and then we'll do our very best to um, get to them towards the end. So as an introduction, um, Police Now's mission is to transform communities, um, reduce crime and antisocial behaviour and increase the public's confidence um, in the police service by recruiting, developing and inspiring outstanding and diverse leaders in society and on the policing front line. Um, since 2015, we've actually recruited and trained over 2,000 police officers, um, posting them in um, both neighbourhood and detective roles um, across England and Wales. Um, I guess our main aim is to bring visible diversity and um, a variety of life experience um, to the front line, um, ensuring that officers are like really, truly diverse um, and representative and of their communities. Um, so whilst diversity is important, um, we kind of want graduates who can also bring in that diversity of thought. Um, so, you know, in terms of individual skills, um, backgrounds, experiences, um, that's one of the reasons why we don't require you to have any um, sort of experience um, or prior knowledge in policing um, to join our programmes. Um, one of the main things that our participants actually have in common is that they're all committed to kind of serving the public and building trust in policing. So this is just an overview of our two year program. I won't go into too much detail. Um, I'll leave that to Anaya who can kind of bring it to life a little bit um, through her experience. Um, but after you've secured a place on our program, um, your two year starts with a condensed training academy. Um, so this is typically around about 22 weeks of training if you were to apply directly to a police force. Um, however, through our program, uh, you can expect to be on the front line soon as you've completed your training at your seven week um, academy. Um, I typically get asked questions like, will I be paid? Um, am I a community support officer? Um, this is a paid full time job um, and throughout the two years you will be a fully fledged police officer um, or police constable. Um, again, I'll let Anaya talk to you a bit more about the role and the type of crimes um, that you'll be dealing with. Um, but yeah, you are a fully fledged police officer. Um, pay does vary depending on uh, which force you end up joining. Um, you'll have an option to choose two preferences um, in your application form. Um, we still have some availab availability left um, with the four forces that you can see on the screen here. Um, as you can see, each force does offer different salaries. Um, 
you also find that some forces will require you um, to live within a certain um, distance um, or area from one of their stations. Um, so we do find that graduates choose to relocate for this reason, uh, which is something that police now is happy to support you with. Um, this is something that your dedicated recruitment officer can uh, speak to you about if it's something that you're considering. Um, there's other things as well that will vary depending on which force you um, choose to apply for. Some will require you to have a driving license, um, some just a provisional. Um, but yeah, that's all something that your recruitment officer can go um, over. Actually, it's, it's also on our website, so it's something that you can look into on our website um, if you're interested. Um, overall, your two years will mostly be spent in a neighbourhoods team. Um, so whilst a response officer attends to um, like 999 calls, which is a little bit more, I guess, reactive, uh, working in a neighbourhoods team will mean that you're working on uh, more proactive policing um, and long term solutions to prevent crime in a community that you're posted in. Um, you have the opportunity in your second year to also apply for a secondment um, or an attachment. Um, I guess the purpose of this is to aid in your professional development. So you can either choose to work elsewhere externally with one of our common partners uh, for four weeks. So in the past, I know that some of our participants have gone to do some work with um, like the Home Office, um, National Crime Agency, um, or you can kind of choose to, as I mentioned, work um, on an attachment. So that's somewhere um, in another team within your force um, for a couple of weeks instead. Again, this is um, just to kind of expand your knowledge and skill set in order for you to either bring it back to your neighbourhood policing role um, or for you to just generally develop um, your professional skills. Um, another frequently asked question that I get is what happens after the two years? Um, am I still a police officer after the two years? Um, it is literally a job for life like you don't finish the program and that's that um you know it's as long as everything goes well when you're in terms of your probation and stuff um it is a job for life um some people choose to stay in neighborhood policing some people choose to move to other specialist units um some people decide to go for a promotion um it is completely up to you what you decide to do um, after the program, but we will be there to kind of com continue to support you in your development um, and support you beyond the program um, as you become part of our alumni network. So in terms of suitability, um, you will need to meet um, our eligibility requirements to join. Um, so you need to hold at least uh, one UK level three qualification in any subject. Um, you need to hold a two one or above undergraduate degree by the program start date in um, by the summer. Um, again, in any subject, um, you must not have taken the College of Policing licensed pre join degree in professional policing practice. That's a bit of a mouthful. Um, but basically that's because um, if you when you join our program, it's basically studying the same thing in terms of like uh, the degree. Um, you must not have previously attested, trained or been employed as a police constable um, and not have a current offer for another police constable route. Um, those are just kind of the standard eligibility requirements. Um, but on the left, you will see here there are some qualities that we uh, find are most um, I guess, makes a person most suitable for the policing role. Um, so the ability to be resilient and bounce back um, from certain situations, um, empathy, self-awareness, excellent communication, um, the ability to be proactive, um, adaptability, um, as well as the ability to kind of influence and negotiate with others as it is a people facing role. Um, you're not only working with vulnerable people, but you're working with victims, suspects, local organisations, the council, um, to name a few. Um, I'd say bear in mind, these are the qualities that will be tested during the recruitment process. But more importantly, um, you will be benchmarked against our competency and values framework, um, which you can find on our website. Um, my number one advice would be to study the framework, um, think about different examples or ways that you've kind of demonstrated um, these in the past so that you are well prepped for your assessments. 
So the moment you've all been waiting for. Um, I know that was probably a lot of information to digest in just a couple of minutes, but I didn't want to give too much away um, as I know that Anaya will help to bring the program to life a little bit more. Um, again, if there's any questions, please pop them in the chat and we'll try our best to get to them at the end. Over to you, Anaya. Thanks, Annie. I'll try my best to wow everyone. Um, firstly, can I just check you can hear me OK? Yes. Yeah, fabulous. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, firstly, thank you Annie, for inviting me to share my journey into policing. Um, my name is Inaya and I'm an officer with West Midlands Police and I joined through the Police Now Graduate Leadership Programme um, and I was part of the cohort six intake. Um, so I joined back in 2020 and recently graduated off the programme um, last year, so October last year, so very recently. Um, so how my journey to policing began? Um, Whenever I get asked this question, I never have like a straightforward answer. Um, many of my colleagues who have been in police, who are in police, and sorry, um, kind of knew that they wanted to join the job uh, from a young age, or, and I, I fall in the the small minority who just never ever considered policing. Um, you could say it just happened. Um, so I was actually studying psychology at university um and while studying psychology i was working part-time in retail and i was also volunteering in the mental health um area of work in the nhs so a lot of my um area of work was supporting vulnerable adults with mental health and i absolutely enjoyed it i worked in the wards and towards the end of my degree i worked as a community support volunteer um, and then i remember at one point which i reflect on now thinking how on earth i did it i think i had like two or three jobs at the same time while studying um, so i worked um, as a care worker and i provided domiciliary care for people with severe um, physical disabilities and I absolutely loved it um, and each and every role I just loved helping people um, and naturally I thought I'd go into um, the mental health area of work however it required a lot of studying and a lot of experience and I just wanted to go out there um, so I remember meeting with my tutor and she actually suggested have you done any research or have you had a look at any graduate schemes or graduate programs um, and I remember hearing about them so I thought right I'll, I'll have a look um, and that's when I actually came across police now um, I did a bit of reading and re some research into it um, I read about the mission um, and I knew if I wanted to join policing it would be West Midlands which is local to me um, and I looked at the values around um, policing um, and it really did interest me because I think something I always say is that every one of us has our own personal values um, from our education, employment, our upbringing and a lot of the values such as resilience, transparency, um, fairness, equality, a lot of these values and the mission around police now to transform communities, increase public confidence was something that really resonated among me. Um, however, it wasn't a simple step as just applying. I was very hesitant. Um, I thought, I thought, I, I always thought policing was um, a very do male dominated role. Um, and someone like myself didn't fit the category of policing. Reflecting on that now, I know how wrong I was. Um, policing values diversity and inclusivity. Um, we we want people from different backgrounds, walks of life um, to join policing because we want people who are reflective of the communities we serve. So after some thinking and some reflection and speaking with family and friends, I thought I'm going to go for it. And I, I did actually put my application in um, and that's when my journey into policing started. So, uh, Annie, you able to go? I was just pressing the next button, like I've, I was able to change it. 
Thank you. So yeah, so I completed the online application form. Um, and once I completed that, I was then invited to the next stage, which was the online assessment. Um, the online assessment consisted, if I recall correctly, if there's anything, any you feel um, is slightly changed, um, please do let me know. Um, so I was invited to the next stage, um, and that was essentially completing the online assessment. And that consisted of some scenario based um, questions. Um, in the life of a neighbourhood officer. Um, the online assessment I don't believe is timed, so you can take as much time as you need. The online assessment also consisted of personality questions, which just looks at the way you work. So my best advice is just be yourself, um, give it your best shot, take your time, which is exactly what I did. Um, and then once I completed the online assessment, um, to my surprise, I was then invited to an assessment centre. Um, I believe this has changed and it's now online. Um, so when I applied, it was just before the pandemic. So I was invited to an assessment centre, which was half a day in London, and it consisted of various exercises, um, included visual reality, um, strength-based, scenario-based questions and uh, scenario-based role-play exercises as well. My advice is, as Annie mentioned, is really look at and understand the competency and value framework. It's something that's um, developed by the College of Policing and they manage all, um, they sort of work with all police forces. Um, so I definitely say, please do look at that. Um, I do, I just, at the time when I applied, um, Police Now also offered a coaching video call. Um, I highly, highly recommend, I believe it's still available to have a coaching video call. I've never had um, a any form of coaching before and when I went into that coaching room I learned so much about myself meeting someone who knew nothing about me other than the fact that I had an assessment centre arranged made me realise how much I can offer and how much um, my experiences from volunteering even working part-time as well as my studies could be excellent examples to use, not only at the assessment centre, but also your online assessment. So please do, I highly recommend a coaching video call if you've not already booked onto one. Once I completed my assessment centre, I was then contacted um, a short while later and was told that I was offered a conditional offer on the, the programme. And then after that, it was essentially conditional and subject to vetting checks, which were done by the force. So as part of the recruitment process, you'll get vetted, you'll have medical checks and references. It may sound overwhelming, but I can assure you, please now, they were incredibly supportive. Um, they There was essentially a portal and they regularly check um, your progress. They'll link in with you, see how you're getting on and prov provide any support that's available to you. Um, so that's essentially the recruitment process. Is there is there any questions? Anyone wants to? I can see some questions in the chat. Just have a look. Oh, there's quite a few questions. Um, I think is there any that I think maybe Annie, you might need to just take away. Perhaps I don't know. Yeah, Naya, maybe yeah, Naya, we will. Maybe. Should we look at them at the end? Yeah. Okay, no problem. Right, okay, yeah. Um, next slide, please. Okay, um, so once my um, vetting checks as part of the recruitment process were completed, um, I also, as part of that, completed the fitness test, which was a bleep test, um, and you're required to get up to a level 5.4. So once all that was completed, it was then where the real sort of police journey into policing started. So that was Police Now Academy. Um, for myself, that was six weeks. 
Um, I know that has changed and it is now seven weeks. Um, and part of my training due to COVID was partly online um, and part of it was residential. So it was in Manchester. Um, for yourselves, it would be the whole duration of the seven weeks will be in person. I believe it's either Wide Boston or is it Hinckley in Leicester? So I believe it's either the two, um, but your yourselves, your your academy will be in person. Training uh, for those seven weeks, in my case, six weeks is intensive and it's challenging. Um, however, it's absolutely crucial and vital training to equip you with the necessary skills and knowledge that you need for policing, essentially, to be able to carry out your duties. Um, and part of that training is it's it's not just sat at a desk um, learning off a board. It, there's so much more to the training. It's really quite, it varies and it ranges. So there's different, there's um, there's your legislative knowledge um, where you'll get regularly um, sort of knowledge checks. Um, you'll also have um, training with your force. So training as well around your personal safety training, first aid training and you'll also have regular assessments um, such as around stop and search, roadside breath tests, conducting interviews, regularly checking your knowledge um, and providing you with that relevant support that's available. As part of the training at Academy, um, how it works and how it worked when I was at Academy was there was um, myself and around nine or ten other colleagues from my force um, and we would be as a group and we'd have our syndicate lead who would who was a sergeant slash line manager he would manage us um, if there was any concerns we had we could go to him to discuss that if there was any concerns and worries around um, our knowledge gaps etc he was there available to help um, you, you also had a PDC which is a per, uh, I think is, is it a personal or professional can never remember development coach um, they were there they were also available at Academy as well as remotely to contact uh, via Teams calls and you could book um, a session with them just to discuss any skills, any concerns, etc. that you may have. So the support at Academy is fantastic. The training as well is very um, go, go, go. However, it's, it's incredibly rewarding and there's so much in terms of your development and how much you can learn about yourself as well. Thank you, Annie. So starting in full. So once my six weeks at Academy came to an end, it was then so journey. So police now's training came to an end and then you then began your in force training with your force. So for me, that was with West Midlands Police and it was two weeks immersive training. Again, that was virtually due to the pandemic. However, it will be in person for yourselves. And that was more spe for specific learning and training around police systems. This varies across forces, which is why it was training that was led by your specific force. So it was around the relevant police systems that you would be using. It would be around radio etiquette. Um, this is training that's also provided by police now. So some of the stuff, it was just essentially um, a refresher. Um, you'd also learn about the specific enforced policies and procedures, um, such as use of force um, and body worn video. And again, it was just refreshing of the key pieces of legislation and powers to ensure we were absolutely comfortable in utilising those powers, such as use of force and stop and search, which are really um, crucial powers that need to be used wisely. Um, so it was it, it was fantastic in terms of the training from police now to then going into force and then being ready to start on your neighbourhood team. Um, I have put it varies force to force. So with West Midlands, we um, completed our in-force training and then we joined our neighbourhood teams. However, with some forces, you may do 10 weeks on response. 
Um, another thing I completely forgot to mention actually was whilst you're, you're training with at the academy, um, you do also have the opportunity to do in force training. So field training, apologies. Um, so you'd have the opportunity to do field training um, where essentially you will get kitted up and meet your neighbourhood team who you'll be spending the next two years with and go out and get to know your community, um, which is an excellent um, insight before returning to training um, and getting yourself essentially ready to join for the next two years. So the role, um, there's no sort of simple way of putting what a neighbourhood officer does. I think it really does vary. Um, and you may you may have heard the saying where no two days are the same, and it really is true. Um, policing, there, there genuinely isn't no two days that are the same. It really does vary, especially as a neighbourhood officer. Um, and as part of the role, when I joined my local neighbour team, um, I joined an area which is a deprived part of West Midlands. Um, and there was a lack of trust with the police. So for me, what was really important was understanding my community, understanding the wide range of issues in my local area and listening to the concerns. Um, a lot of those issues and concerns were around drug dealing, um, street drinking, antisocial behaviour, um, gangs. So for me, it was going in there and understanding where those issues were, where our hotspot locations were, who our long term partners were, our existing partners and potential partners to work with. And it was also looking at what was already done from a neighbourhood perspective and where I could essentially implement new ideas. Um, and something that I really want to point out and highlight is in policing, there's no set way of how we do things or how things are done. Um, and we actively encourage um, officers bringing new ideas and new perspectives um, and that's why you are a neighbourhood officer and a police now officer to look at long-term problems from the wider perspective um, and an example I can give um, is when I joined my team the prevalent issue that I could see was on our local high street which was street drinking and it had been going on for quite a long time um, and I'm talking about years um, and I looked at the existing um, work that was being done um, around street drinking and that was policing the local area, um, so essentially patrolling the local area, um, moving the drinkers on, but there was no sort of long-term work in terms of prevention and intervention. Um, so for me, I looked at the issue and I looked at what other forces were doing um, and a term you'll hear is evidence based policing um, and it's looking at best practices and that's exactly what I did. Um, and I think policing, it's all about being creative in your ideas and bringing new ideas forward. And that's what I did. And I worked, I uh, had a look at what other forces were doing and they had implemented a street drinking intervention where they worked with local stores and off licenses. So I built a rapport with our off licenses because that was something that we never did or ever considered doing. Um, so we built that trust with our local community, our off licenses, um, listening to the concerns that they had. And we also built a lot of intelligence, something you'll do a lot as an able officer, gaining intelligence as well. Um, and through the intervention and also through approaching our drinkers and listening to the reasons why they were causing an essentially making them aware of the, the effects that they were having on the local community, um, we managed to essentially implement a proactive intervention, including a public space protection order that consisted of working with the council. Um, and essentially, tackle street drinking. Um, so my advice there is that when it comes to policing, don't be afraid to bring new ideas forward. Um, and it kind of links to some of the skills, such as being an effective problem solver, a decision maker, as well as a listener. Um, and 
again, each day brings its own challenges. Um, therefore, it's really important to be adaptive. As a neighbour officer, you may be making decisions for the long term as well as for the short term in situations where it's sort of now or never where you need to make quick and fast thinking decisions. Um, so you do, in terms of my two years, I learned a lot about myself and I continuously developed and even post program so after leaving the program I still I still learn and many officers will say the learning never ends in policing. So in terms of professional development and career progression um, so police now offers a lot of opportunities um, you will as part of your studies, you will achieve a diploma in professional policing. Um, at the time, I achieved that diploma and studied for that diploma with Huddersfield University that has now changed to Liverpool John Moores University. And that consists of two years um, of assignments. Um, from when I did mine, it would consist of an assignments that were related around policing and you would study topics such as domestic abuse, um, modern day slavery, um, around the importance and effectiveness of um, evidence-based policing. Um, so a wide range of areas of policing which you study, which in turn benefit you as a neighbourhood officer. Um, essentially putting theory into practice is how I like to say it because a lot of the knowledge you learn from academics really does apply to policing. Um, as, as it benefits you as a neighbourhood officer. Um, so I also had the opportunity to do and complete several attachments. Those included on the Public Protection Unit, um, as well as the Force Criminal Investigation Department. Um, they essentially investigate um, criminal offences against, so the criminal, the PPU department, they investigate offences against um, people such as assaults, um, and the Criminal Investigation Department investigate offences such as robbery, theft, etc. I also had the opportunity to go on an attachment with the response unit. So again, those were responding to 999 calls um, and it was an excellent insight into the different departments in policing and get a flavour of the different areas of work. And again, I absolutely enjoyed it because I continuously developed my skills, my knowledge, such as statement, taking statements, communicating on the radio, making decisions where it was a life or death situation. So it was really fantastic and I'd highly recommend anyone to definitely go on any attachments that are available to you. Um, and as Annie mentioned, um, attachments are also available with um, out of force, so partner um so our partners such as the Home Office um, and the National Crime Agency as well. So um, yeah, so that's some amazing um, opportunities and attachments that I'd highly recommend. So in terms of, again, professional development, um, there's also the opportunity for promotion um, and that is a sergeant's ex exam as well as fast track to inspector. Um, so one thing I want to highlight is once you have finished on the programme and you are an alumni, um, police now still provide support um, and they provide um, a connection for life, as Annie mentioned. Um, so as an alumni, you regularly get contacted by police now and they'll provide support around the sergeant's exam as well as fast track to inspector. Um, they offer mock boards as well. Um, so since leaving the programme, I have applied and have been part of the cohort for Police Now Frontline Leadership Programme and they offer frontline officers who um, are interested in going for promotion um, with five talk days where we meet officers from all across different forces to essentially develop on our skills and our knowledge to apply for promotion um, and that specifically relates to promotion to sergeant rank. Um, next slide. 
So since I um, completed the programme, um, I had the opportunity to be a syndicate lead at the Cohort 8 Academy, which was uh, the academy that's just, um, which is Cohort 8, which has just ended uh, late, uh, late last year. It was absolutely fantastic um, and really quite surreal for me, to be honest, because having joined through Cohort 6, um, coming towards the end of my um, of my um, journey into the programme to then be a, a syndicate lead managing 10 of my own students who are beginning their journey was fantastic. Um, it was it was it was great to see see them from where I was two years ago essentially um, and be involved in their training so I had the opportunity to be involved in their legislative knowledge supporting them in terms of any concerns that they had or any nervousness around it um, and as I said training was seven weeks residential um, and it can it can become stressful as it is challenging however providing them with that necessary support and the perseverance they, they have gone a long way and I'm really proud of each and every one of them um, who are doing well in their neighbourhood um, areas. Um, so for me, the opportunity as being a syndicate lead was fantastic and I'd highly recommend it to anyone. Um, so after completing um, my secondment with police and I was a syndicate lead, I returned back into force and I joined um, our partnerships team as a hate crime officer. So I tackle hate crime and support all our neighbour teams across Birmingham um, around key issues around hate crime. Um, that's something that I've been doing since November, something that I'm really enjoying, um, learning a lot again, um, and really does allow me to interact with l lots of local neighbourhood teams as well. So beyond the programme as well, so I am in a specialist department and there are other specialist departments that um, alumni can join as well. And I've just put a few there as examples, such as the investigations team, as I mentioned, the public protection unit, the force criminal investigation department, as well as firearms, surveillance, response um, or you can stay within neighbourhood. Um, I have many colleagues um, in my cohort who um, are still in neighbourhood, still doing the amazing work that they are, um, are continuing to do. So there's a wide range of opportunities out there and the continuous support that you get from police now. Um, so I think in terms of development and growth, it, there's no sort of time scale, you're continuously doing it. Thank you, Annie. Okay. Um, so, in terms of advice um, that I'd give myself, and I think advice that I'd give everyone, um, in t and those joining policing is really that you're capable of so much more than you can imagine um so don't be afraid don't underestimate yourself and go for it um and something that i realized during my journey of policing is that i actually suffered with imposter syndrome um and i don't know if anyone's familiar with that term and it was only something i found about out about myself which is something my inspector actually highlighted last year where um i kind of didn't realize how much more i could achieve when i put my mind to it um and my advice to everyone is just go for it um you are the change that we want to see in policing we value diversity and inclusivity so when you so i highly recommend just ask those questions make those suggestions and implement those new ideas because if it's not you then who um and policing honestly it's a fantastic career it's amazing and I wouldn't have changed it for the world. Um, you see the highs, you see the lows, but it's such a rewarding career. Um, and it's a career that I would never change. And I'm so glad that from that day where I 
submitting my application that I never looked back um, and I wish you all the best of luck in your journey. Uh, thank you. Wow, amazing. Wow. What, amazing. A, what, what a way to end the session. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Anaya. Um, That's OK, um, thank you. I do hope today has given you all a better insight um, into the role of a neighbourhood police officer. Um, with the time that we have left, um, about 20 minutes, um, please do use this chance to ask Anaya as many questions um, or myself any questions that you might have. I know that we've all already got some in the chat, so I'm just going to check. Right. Um, all right, so the first one um, from Ubon. Thank you, Ubon. Um, currently a master's degree student, also a Nigerian. I would like to get clarification if I can join the force. Um, well, it depends, really. Um, first thing is you do need to meet those eligibility requirements that I mentioned in terms of, um, you know, your undergraduate degree, UK level three qualification. So um, my best advice um, for you would probably be to go onto our website um, and actually use our eligibility checker tool. So um, it's basically a little um, tool that you can kind of answer yes, no question, yes, no answers. Um, and it will tell you if you're eligible. Um, but yeah, I think that would definitely be a good place to start. Um, is there anything you want to add to that, Anaya? Or? Um, no, I think you answered that perfectly. Cool. Hopefully that answers your question, Ubon. Um, hello, I meet the eligibility requirements. However, I only received a 2-2 for my undergrad. Um, by the start date, I'll have completed my MSc um, in forensic psychology. Unfortunately not, Rana. Um, we do need uh, you to have be have a 2-1 degree or um, be on track to be to have a 2-1 degree. Um, it's not something that we can kind of, um, you know, give leeway for, um, unfortunately. Um, but definitely there's so many more opportunities to join the police through other routes that don't require you to have a 2-1. You can enter for a 2-2. Um, I recommend there to join, um, to look up College of Policing website, um, to look at all the different entry routes that you can um, join with a 2-2. Um, next question. Um, Candidate can choose the path, detective slash community policing, or is it randomly assigned? Um, well, the program is, the National Graduate Leadership Program is focused on neighbourhood policing, but as Anaya just mentioned there, there are so many opportunities to do some detective work on a program. There's so many opportunities to do other things um, on a program, um, but mainly you are in your neighbourhood policing role. Anaya, anything to add? No, so yeah, as Annie said, um, it is directly neighbourhood police and that you would essentially the application and the intake is around is essentially neighbourhood policing. However, um, you do have the opportunity, several opportunities to go into attachments with different departments. Um, and then should you wish to, at the end of your two years, apply to a specialist department such as response or as a detective, um, you can by all means do that uh, depending on your force. Um, and if there is sort of a recruitment drive or any vacancies available, um, there are many officers that I know and colleagues who join through police now who are now detectives and specialist um, departments such as, as I mentioned, the PPU, FCID, um, or High Harm. Um, so yeah, that opportunity is still available. Thanks, Naya. Um, I can see you followed up with a couple more questions about your degree. Um, I would say if if it has to be a 2-1 degree, if it's done outside of the UK, we do accept it, but we you will need to um, have translations I think it's like you you need to have it translated um, um, during the is it the references process and I are it is isn't it like yeah during that during that stage we will ask you for your degree um, and you will need to um, have that translated um, I believe there's a website somewhere that can actually tell you what your degree is equivalent to in UK qualification um, so I'd say definitely search that up um, 
but yeah, let me move on to the next question. Were there any other grad grad schemes that you were looking into and what grad scheme or role would you have gone into if you weren't at police now? I guess that's for you and I, so I'll leave that with you. <laughs> Um, so when I did my research in term, into graduate schemes and graduate programmes, there were quite a few that I came across. Um, however, there was a few that I saw before police now. And when I did see police now, it kind of just, I just knew, I knew it was policing. I knew it was what I wanted to go into. Um, so I think what, another thing um, which I didn't mention was I also attended a, um, what my university held was, um, they brought in different organisations who were offering graduate schemes and graduate programmes. Um, police now were in, in attendance and there was other graduate programmes and schemes there as well who I had applied to. Um, and when I spoke with um, the marketing officer from, uh, from police now um, and got just uh, some worries and concerns, I just knew that it was it was police and that I wanted to go into. Um, and it was quite nice because two years after on my graduation, I actually met that officer who I saw at my university and I said, what are the chances I'm, you know, finishing the programme and the scheme and just thanking him for that advice. Um, so, yeah, um, whilst I considered others, I think with my personal sort of um, experience, because with policing, it's so diverse in terms of, it's not just investigating crime, you're helping people in need in terms of in crisis. Um, there's a wide range of work that you do, so it really does vary. And that's an element of policing that I loved um, because you're always helping people in any way that is in terms of whatever the day brings really. I guess linked to that then, Anaya, somebody's asked, why did you choose policing over the private sector jobs which offer better pay compared to uh, public sector jobs? Um, for me, the, the pay doesn't really, I, I don't want to be in a job where whilst it's an amazing pay, I don't enjoy it and I don't find it fulfilling or rewarding. Um, and policing is a career which might, which I, how I always thought is, it's a career which I don't think about the money, I don't think about that salary. I mean, I don't even know when the last time I even checked my pay salary, but it's just, I love coming to work. I genuinely love coming to work. Um, looking at, for example, as an abled officer, you'll be dealing with things such as um, antisocial behaviour um, and things like this. It's, it's stuff that's happen, ha having a detrimental effect on people and people's lives. For me, what I find rewarding is seeing seeing issues solved. Um, that's what I love more than the pay. I mean, don't get me wrong. I need to. We, we pay is important in terms of um, paying the bills, especially in the current climate. But for me, um, policing for me is more than just a salary it's making a difference essentially making a difference in communities that really need us more than ever really yeah, I hope that answered that question yeah you definitely hear that a lot with police officers like I think for, like the best advice is think about what you want to do in a like what do you yeah. want out of your career is it that you want big bucks from a private organization or is it that you want fulfillment um a more meaningful career um but while still earning a steady salary that can pay the bills yeah. um so yeah these are great questions by the way um <laughs> they are we've got one coming about accommodation provided for the in-person training should i take this one yeah go for it yeah, so Anaya did mention her one was part hybrid, um, part virtual, just because of the pandemic. But we are definitely back in person um, and it is um, accommodation is provided. The academy is fully residential. Um, some people do get worried about that, you know, being away uh, for so long, for seven weeks away from home. But I believe you get the weekends to go home um, and, do. yeah, and, you know, it's it's a great way to kind of you know, stay in one place whilst there is the intense training happening. You know, we don't want you traveling back and forth um, every day. It's it, it's going to be tiring if you were to do that. Um, so, yeah, it is fully provided and it's, there's no cost associated with that from our participant side. Um, 
what transferable skills has psychology and working with the mental health department helped you with you helped you with in your current career sorry if I asked that a bit funny did you get that okay Uh, yeah yeah so in terms of my degree in psychology it's I think that in itself is very broad as well um so for anyone that's studying or studied psychology there's forensic psychology health psychology clinical psychology it's, it's incredibly broad um but there was a lot of skills from my degree that I sort of carried into policing such as critical thinking communication skills um, decision making skills um empathy as well um i have also had the opportunity to train as a mental health first aider um and that was whilst volunteering um so getting a better understanding around um mental health um and as a in policing we deal with um many mental health related jobs where people are in you know quite serious and severe crises um and just giving them that support um, so my degree has definitely supported me in that um, and supported me more in ways where I don't even realise it as well. So I think subconsciously when I'm dealing with incidences, um, people will sometimes set, sort of point it out. Oh, is this something where you brought from your degree for it and I won't even realise it? So you definitely will utilise and develop on existing skills that you have from your degree as well. Thanks, Anaya. Um, there's a question linking to the same that is very similar to the same question we've just asked. So, do you use your psychology knowledge to tackle crime in, in terms of reading people's minds? Um, I wish I had the power to read people's <laughs> minds, but unfortunately, I don't. <laughs> um, but yeah, I definitely think I, I do use my psychology knowledge. But I think as well, um, as I mentioned, you get a um, you get your diploma in policing from Liverpool John Moores University. Um, so as well as my degree in psychology really helped me as well with um, my diploma in professional policing with, uni- with the university um, and in turn help me in terms of putting that knowledge into practice. So you, you are regularly utilising your, as I said earlier, your existing knowledge um, and your skills. Shannon, thank you for your question. Um, I would say that should be fine for you to still apply, um, but I mean, we've got the email address for our recruitment team up on the screen here. I think if there's any concerns, email them. But I think you should be fine in terms of still applying um, as long as you're on track to achieve that 2-1. Um, another one for you, Anaya. How do you co-op with mental health and work life? Oh, how do you cope with mental health and work life balance? work life balance um so that's a really really good question i think it's a question that doesn't really get asked often um so i think it's really important to switch off um so although as a um, police officer you'll always be on duty um it's important to really sort of step back and think about your own sort of personal well-being um and that's something i learned the hard way i'll be honest um and something that I'd, a bit of advice i'd really hope everyone can take on board is um i i think i at one point i nearly had a burnout because i just wouldn't switch off um i think it was my keenness for policing that i even took it home with me in terms of um just yeah just not switching off um so i think just best practices are um hobbies existing hobbies you have um exercising making sure you're getting your sleep it's really important and um, the shift pattern in policing as well will consist of early shifts as well as late shifts um, and potentially night shifts so it's important to make sure that you are eating you are drinking um, you are sleeping well so just basic things that sometimes we just naturally forget because we're so busy um, so it's important to just really and spend time with friends and family um, I'm sure they'll love to hear all your your, your stories into your journey in policing um, but, but yeah I think just taking a step back and just 
taking some time out for yourself is really, really important. Definitely. Um, I think there's a question that's basically linked to that too, but goes back to when you were um, before you joined the police. So how do you balance doing a part time job and, and a volunteering job? Is it the same advice? Yeah, um, it is. Um, so when I worked part time, I worked part time on the weekends um, and then in terms of volunteering, I did it. Uh, it was about two or three days in the week and that would either be um, in the mornings or in the evenings. I'd fit it around my university schedule as well. So I think time management is really important um, and not to just overwhelm your stuff yourself with so much commitments as well um in terms of when i was volunteering in the nhs um i, I it was something that i really enjoyed and i didn't see it as sort of um a task in itself um sort of like the best way to put it it was just something that was kind of me stepping back and just doing something that i loved and i was passionate about um so yeah i think time management is really important and just working it and Taylor and get around you and how it works best for you. Um, a question for you, Anaya. How do you deal with the situation when you don't agree with your boss's decisions? Oh, well, that's, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah, it's a good question. Um, so how do you deal with your situation? So essentially, um, I think it really does depend on what that decision is, what's it around. Um, so from my own perspective, my uh, bosses are very um, considerate towards officers, um, which is it's what policing is about. Policing is about, um, whilst policing is a rank structure, um, our senior leaders are incredibly supportive. Um, they listen to the concerns of their officers who are on the front line um, and they feed back um, information and take that on board. Um, so I think personally, I've never been in a situation where I haven't agreed. Um, um, because they they are very um, they do they they're very sort they communicate and they listen to us and any concerns we have um, so yeah I hope that answers the question I think it goes back to that advice that you gave too about you know don't be afraid to like you know speak up and give your ideas and you know yeah so, yeah 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 definitely I think as well like um, sort of my senior leaders and my sergeant and my inspector um, on my neighbourhood team they were so keen on new ideas and new perspectives and as I said earlier about advice is don't be afraid because that's what they want um, uh, that's what they're keen to have um, and they they respect decisions um, and I think in policing um as long as your decisions are justified and they're in good faith um, and they are realistic, um, you'll be fine. Um, policing is one big family and we're here to support each other. Um, so, it, and again, it's just a learning process. So, um, that, that's what that's what we're about. We're, we're about bringing creativity, new ideas, um, new approaches. Um, so yeah definitely i can see someone has their hand raised andrea do you want to come off of mute yes hi, hi andrea. i'm aware of the time but just um, um, a couple of short questions i um actually passed uh, the online assessment and i'll have my um final assessment on on saturday and just wanted to to ask anaya about um i can see you're all you're wearing glasses and i'm also wearing glasses and um i know there's an eye <laughs> test and if it's um i don't know an impediment that you're wearing glasses and the second one would be about the physical test if it's mandatory or no um, or not, because some forces do um, have a physical test to pass and some uh, don't, so. Yeah, um, so the eyesight test essentially um, is to see what your vision is like aided. 
So when you, so for West Mids, when I went for my eye test, it was essentially with glasses on or with contact lenses on, whatever you wear, which is easiest for you. So I'll either wear glasses or contact lenses. Um, so they want to see what your eye vision is aided. So I'd highly recommend if you do have wear aided vision to just go to your local optometrist just to make sure your um subs your I was gonna say subscription then prescription <laughs> is um correct and updated. Um, so that's the best advice I can give in terms of your eye vision. Um, and then your second question um, around personal, the fitness test. Yeah. Um, so my force, um, and I think, I, believe, I do believe all forces do have the bleep test. Um, so the that's more towards the end of your um, assessment. So as part of the vetting checks, uh, medical checks, etc., cetera, um, you'll be invited to do your personal safety training. Um, my advice around that is just practice. Um, what I did was I just went for regular jogs out in the park, um, run on the treadmill. Um, many people, the nerves, many people do have nerves around the fitness test and the bleep test, but I think it's more in terms of anxiety and psychological worry um, and some people are more than capable of doing it and I'm sure you will be but I think it's natural to be nervous about it. I know who I was. Thank you. Hopefully that answers your question Andrea, Andrea. Yeah. Um, yeah, and good you. luck for um, your assessment yes. centre. Thank you. Yes, good luck, best of luck. Um, we have run out of time. Thank you again so much, Anaya, um, for joining us today. And thank you all for thank attending. Um, Shannon, I can see you do have a question um, about the rough percentage. I mean, I don't know the percentage, but I do know it's very intensive. It's very competitive. So as we said about the competency framework, do look that up, research mm -hmm. why you want to join police now um, and help you to help you kind of prep for your assessment. Um, you know, we've got the email address there. If anybody has any further questions, please do get in touch. We want to support you. Um, and again, thank you so much. Um, I hope you all have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.